Today, I am going to do a teardown of TripAdvisor's latest trip planning tool. Uh, teardown just being a fancy word for kind of a demo. I, it's definitely not an official demo. I don't work for TripAdvisor. I'm not associated with TripAdvisor. I'm just a person who understands this AI stuff. And I'm going to give you my honest feedback. So first of all, TripAdvisor.com homepage. If anybody does ever start here, it's right here, trips at the top. And hire a trip designer is a new newish uh, service they offer, but plan a trip is where it is. And right there, um, if you've got pre-saved trips, they'll show up here. But a couple of um, pointers on how this works. Beta, which is good, means they're not responsible for anything. So pick a place that we are going to. So for right now, it's a single destination, which is fine. And no problem with that. It's only the first version. Uh, length of trip, or I can pick dates down here. So I'm going to put four days in July. Since we're in July, go with a partner. And let's just do must-see attractions because people might recognize them. We'll be able to judge it. Just so everyone knows, I know San Francisco really well. Been living here for a long time. Uh, this is using ChatGPT, um, OpenAI's uh, GPT. I assume uh, GPT-4, I don't know that. 4 is much better than 3. It's also much more expensive. Um, so they're using GPT to query their own data. So here it is. Um, it's got a summary of San Francisco, kind of how San Francisco is. It's got July weather, which is good. Might have mentioned the fog, but it didn't. And then it's got a, a plan for four days. So day one. Here's what we should be doing. So this is um, starting with Golden Gate Bridge. Absolutely a good start. Bakery on Fishman's Wharf is decent. Fishman's Wharf, everyone's going to groan. People don't love to visit. People don't want to recommend Fishman's Wharf, but it is where everyone goes. Giardelli Square is on Fishman's Wharf. Excellent restaurant. It's a decent first day. So what it's doing is it's just collating or it's putting the itinerary items made up of points of interest or POIs from... TripAdvisor data. So I think most people know TripAdvisor has all this data, like Golden Gate Bridge. It's got 49,000 reviews on the Golden Gate Bridge. Uh, it's not going to show me those here, but if I click through to that, that will go to TripAdvisor.com where I can now read the reviews. It's got the duration, average, three hours, a bit extreme for the bridge. And it's got a summary of um, Golden Gate Bridge itself. I can now put thumbs up, thumb down, thumbs down. I assume they're using that to train for future itineraries and same with other these other POIs. So day two, same kind of thing. We're gonna to go to Alcatraz, that's great. Lombard Street, Coit Tower, fancy restaurant, no chance of getting a reservation, but let's take it easy. It's just version one. It's a good itinerary, cable car, very good. Um, number three, fine. This is jumping around all over the city. So there's no geo plan in here. This is from one end of the city to the other for lunch and then back and then across the city again. So they haven't planned the geo well, but again, first attempt. That doesn't seem like it would be that difficult to fix, but I'm sure they're working on that. And then day four, kind of similar, a um, little bit all over the place, but it's a decent itinerary for four days. It's all within the city. Um, but then again, that's all I asked for. I think most people, four days in San Francisco, you do a day or two out, but you can only expect so much on version one of this stuff. Um, let's just try a different, um, couple of different things. So let's do San Francisco again. And let's also do July, though. And we'll do four days. And I just want to do family this time. So family with kids. Why not ask for how old the kids are? That would be a really easy one. We're going to do must-see attractions again. I'm just going to put nothing on the water and don't go too far from the hotel. We understand that it doesn't know where the hotel is, but let's see what it does with that. And I don't want to go on the water, so no boats, so no Alcatraz. Let's see if it can sort that out. Again, it's querying its data now using GPT. Comes back with the plan, four days with kids. That's fine. It's just some right different description of the, of the city. So this is a GPT result. It's just using different description, um, generating it each time. Uh, California Academy, probably the best thing to do with kids. San Francisco Zoo, excellent. Golden Gate Park, very good. Really good first day, quite a lot of stuff, but that's fine. Fisherman's Wharf Exploratorium. Alcatraz Island, yeah. So it didn't use our don't want to go on the water. Um, that's an obvious fix. I don't think it used that. It didn't, I mean, 
stuff near the hotel. I didn't expect it to do anything with that. It was useless information, but then tell me you don't know what that means, so you haven't applied it. Obviously, it's not applied. Don't go on the water either. So that extra thing we typed in, I don't think did much. Maybe you have to type in a category into that. Didn't say that, but that's possible. And then day three, fine. It's a, it's a decent itinerary. Not really good restaurants for kids, um, but hey, that's fine. I've got my map here. Everything's plotted out. Um, I can click on that, see the points of interest. That's pretty good. So let's save that. I can save it as a private or a public. Public, everyone can now visit my itinerary. The best trip planning tool I ever saw was Utrip. Uh, no longer in business, unfortunately, but it was excellent. It was very geo-based, helped you get from one spot to the other. It had experts that came in, I think some celebrities as well, that created curated the curated, curated trips, uh, which with them, them, them share them with people that had concierges come in and that kind of thing, a bunch of experts. So this is now saved. Um, a view trip here, is that just the same thing? It is there we go there's our there's our trip kind of in one nice tidy place and all built up so let's go and edit this trip see what we can do so it's just got a list of pois again this is not details other than pois that's i assume that that's the, the data trip advisor has is poi based so they know the points of interest they know about all the museums all the attractions the places the restaurants they're very good at that Knowing that there's a fountain on the side street behind this house on the left, they're not so good at. So they've based it on the POIs, which is probably the right thing to do for version one. One hopes it will iterate and, and get better over time. So I've got my four days worth of stuff. If I just delete day two, they just move day three to day two, which seems reasonable. I can delete parts on here. Twin Peaks is too far away. I don't want to see that. I want to go to the Golden Gate Park earlier in the day. I can just move stuff around. It's pretty good, to be fair. Um, can I add stuff to the end of it? Nope. So there we go. So that's editing a trip. What else can I do on edit? Nothing on that. Um, what if I go into my saves? So that's all my things to do there. It's a little bit confusing. More, find and save, create a note. So I can now add a note to the itinerary, which is pretty good. I'm gonna add some transportation, that kind of thing. Add a filter so I can filter by restaurants. Uh, I can filter by things to do, places to go, that sort of thing, that's pretty good. Um, so overall, I'd say this is pretty good. I've got some settings up here. Hold on, I can go to invite, so I can invite Collaborators, definitely useful. People I'm traveling with. And on my settings, I can change the name of the trip. That's an obvious one. I can change the trip length. So I'm going to add a day to this trip. I've changed my flights. I'm adding a day. Um, description, collaborators. I can duplicate the trip. I can delete it. So I've added a day. And day four is empty. Let me add some items. So it's only showing me the items that it gave me before. Um, hey, that that's fine. Um, it's it's version one. I assume down the road it'll create a full list and I can re-generate a list of items for day four. This is pretty. This is this is actually really good. A um, couple of problems with trip planners. First problem is no one uses them. Um, no one ever has. Everyone's tried this. Everyone's failed. This time it's different is what everyone will say because of AI. I think that might be true. This as it is, is not going to change the world, but it's version one. No, no one's going to use this as it is. People will try it. It's not going to get traction as it is. But I think they're on the right track here to creating something which is actually really useful. Is it better than a concierge could create right now? Absolutely not. It's not close to what a concierge would give you if they st stood in front of you for 10 minutes. But to sit at home and do some exploration and create kind of an outline for a trip as an outline is actually really good. Um, so for step one, this is actually a really good tool. Um, I'm sure they've got great things planned. You can do so much more now with this AI stuff using the data that TripAdvisor already has than was possible eight months ago. Uh, TripAdvisor has 
probably the most data of any travel company when it, come, when it comes to things to do in a location. It's got all this point of interest data. It's got the reviews, which are good and bad. It's got tons of reviews. The average data there is probably good. It's got a lot of subjective stuff, which is not good. But they've got the potential to do a lot with that. They've also got all their forum data, which will be full of a lot of junk as well. But they could definitely use that. So I think there's a ton of potential. If anyone's going to crack this, if any of the big people, the big boys are going to crack this, I think it's TripAdvisor. But there's going to be a bunch of startups. There are a bunch of startups already doing this as well. They're using Google points of interest, which are available to everybody on API. So as much as TripAdvisor's got all this great data, anybody else can also get this data from Google. TripAdvisor's maybe is better, maybe not. But um, really good start. I'm actually really impressed with this. Um, interesting to see what they're going to build, how much time they're going to put in it. They've got obviously a customer base, so they'll get tons of eyeballs on this and people using it and breaking it, and they'll learn a lot from that, which is the problem for the startups. It's always been the problem for the startups. They haven't had the eyeballs to iterate. So... This is good. I'm really excited with this first version. Again, I've got no problem ripping this thing apart if I thought it was terrible, but I'm actually um, quite impressed. Looking to see what's in version two. That's it. I might do a few other um, teardowns of trip planning apps because I've been looking at quite a few of them. So maybe look for these in the future. Thanks for listening.